Whoa! It is time. About a week and a half has passed. We've been to the Dallas meetup. I gave everyone a little bit of chance, so there will be some spoilers in this, but we're finally going to review Yaira. Woohoo! So, the way that I'm starting this out is let's pretend like we don't know anything about the Ripaverse. We're going to treat it like it is its own standalone story. That's what I'm going to do with that. There will be mild spoilers. I don't want to, like, fuck it up for everyone. But I do want to go through a lot of the things that uh, stood out to me. And without showing artwork as well, because, um, I mean, you should buy a copy for yourself to appreciate the artwork and the writing. I'm just going to talk about the storyline. So it starts out, Ice, I'm getting his ass beat. By guess who? The one, the only. Maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. She's very much in the moment, and things are said, things happen from a natural course of causality. It's not this happens, then this happens. This happens because this happens, because this happened in the past. But that's just a, that's a, you know, that's a dovetail of uh, extremely good writing, which everyone knows that I'm a fan of the Sasuke sisters writing in their movies. And I was, I'm not really into comic books until recently, but, uh, they're kind of turning me into more of the nerd sphere because Rip is just not missing with any of this stuff. Not that I agree with everything, but oh my gosh, as a whole, and this is spoiling the end of the fucking video. I freaking loved it. So it starts out Isom's getting his ass beat. And what Yara says is, I told you not to follow me. And then, of course, Alpha Core shows up. And she does the same thing to them. She's like, I told you, stop following me. Leave me the hell alone. I think we can all, at some point in our lives, feel that same way. It's like, Dad, gum it. I'm dealing with some shit. Why can't you just leave me the frick alone? Yes, I make maybe poor decisions, but I'm trying to figure shit out, and, like, you're constantly breathing down my neck. It's like, well, that's just hot. Get off my neck, you stupid. So I think that's, like I said, coming in as if this is his own standalone story. That's kind of what it felt like to me, which is a great thing. And I did read Alpha Core, so I'm trying to keep those kind of thoughts out of my review with this, because I do know the characters already. She moonlights as Sally Rodell. It's kind of like the Clark Kent version of going incognito. Or people don't know that she's Yaira, but she goes by another name, and she puts on some glasses and a business suit. And she's working at this... Um, Highly technological place. And without giving too much, uh, she's basically at the top of her class. So automatic respect. You could tell she knows what the heck she's doing. And so that actually sets something up for later. And we'll get into that, or maybe we won't, because I don't want to give away the entire story. And then it cuts. The scenes change, and we go to this young Hispanic woman, and they're getting ready to rob some folks. And shit goes down. Uh, the language changes, and that's another thing that I love about this book, is that uh, there are a lot of different languages. Yes, you'll be able to read it all in English, but it is annotated in a way where you can tell that there are other forms of language being used. But anywho, they don't shy away from violence or language or anything like that. And actually, who you might call the the secondary character or maybe the, the co-lead, she's basically got a mortal wound. 
and then her powers are enacted. And no one knows what's going on, but it's reading on the scales the same as Yaira. They they, uh, they say it in there, like they have the same energy signature. Yaira doesn't know what it is either. So she goes around and I was like, I'm going to kill this bitch. And then other things happen throughout the course of the story. I really suggest you read it. It's so freaking enthralling. So when Stefania first uh, gets imbued with these powers, um, she sends a shockwave. She has no idea what's going on. And she sends her power straight up in the air, and it actually uh, involves the Celestials that Yaira is running from. And so they think they found Yaira. And so this is where uh, the main baddies come in. Obviously, one's a lord, one's a lady. We have Yanessa and Yantoni. Please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing those. This is how I read them. And we also have this demon bug creature named Magus Numite. Who obviously uh, Yaira had a soft spot for, at least in the beginning, but he seems hell bent on just feasting, you know, like any bug does, but in a much more despicable way. It, it reminded me of the darkness. Y'all remember those video games, the darkness? Holy crap, those are the, at least the first one was really good. The second one was fun too, but anywho, uh, I digress. So it goes on, and they have a bunch of fights. Uh, I. I, I don't really want to say a bunch of fights, but they have their scuffles and everyone's pretty evenly matched on the surface until you realize that Yaira is fighting off three celestial beings at once. And yeah, she gets her ass beat around a little bit, but she also stands her ground. It's like you could tell she's fighting for something more. And then there's a portion that I do not want to spoil. So, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to skip to another part of the book. All right, so coming back. And there, there is a lot that I'm leaving out of this just because I want everyone to experience it for themselves because it's totally worth it. You need to experience it. So, I don't want to tell you plot for plot point. We get to a part where Yara kind of reminisces and tells a story about... It's almost like a legend, even though she is the legend. She is the myth. And it's about a past life from a long time ago. Um, yes, her uh, character model is meant to look Scandinavian for a reason, even though she is not. But it's a beautiful love story. And it almost was kind of reminiscent of uh, the movie Hancock. I know that I know that seems kind of stupid, little Will Smith and Charlize Theron movie. But when you have angelic super beings that basically don't age or age uh, way slower than normal life. You have relationships and you watch them die. It's almost kind of like uh, in the same way like Lord of the Rings. Even though Aragorn has long life being son of the Numenor and Arwen, Arwen even star is basically never going to die. She's immortal. Over time, she will watch him fade away until he dies. And so it's, it's, it wrestles with themes kind of like that of what Yara had to deal with. She found true love at one point, you know, almost uh, naively and gave herself to it. And... As anyone who knows who's ever been in love before, like it feels like it it's your entire world. That's all you think about. You wake up thinking about that person. You go to bed dreaming about that person and hoping they're in your arms with you. She gave into that human notion of it with a certain person. And the slow decay of time, in her eyes, the fast decay of time, took that from her so she said never again so there's things if you pay attention to her character that are constantly going on in her head things that have happened hundreds of years ago generations ago basically she's fallen into legend because she's been around for so long and uh until alpha core showed up and they kind of did something with the accepts where 
they're kind of documented now. So people are trying to keep tabs on them, especially Solari. And so they're just trying to keep an eye on things. And she's trying to deal with that uh, in her own way. And it actually gets to a point to the end. I don't want to spoil any more. So I'm just going to kind of wrap it up towards the end. Um, she gets to a point after she tells her story to the audience. And she goes through a couple of things. And she comes to the realization that if there is an afterlife, she doesn't believe there is, but her husband told her that one day they would meet each other again in the afterlife. And after everything that's going on, everything that has happened to her, like she can't escape pretty much anything. She always holds that piece of him in her heart. She is willing to give her life to do it the right way so that she is welcome at the table in Valhalla. And we end on a cliffhanger. Um, it's not as cut and dry as that. Like I said, I'm not... There's some story points that I'm giving you, and there's a lot that I'm not, and I'm purposely leaving out because I really want you to read the book. Well, I hope I did uh, a decent job uh, without spoiling too much because I don't want to give too many details. I really don't. It's a, it's a very intricate story, and you could tell that the women, who luckily I got to meet in person in Dallas, uh, Jenna Sylvia Saska, they know what the hell they're doing. They know how to write stories. They know how to write characters, and you could tell that they outline and pay attention to the arcs of what that character goes through across multiple ones. And they had one of the daunting tasks of including this new character into a realm where we already have Alpha Core, where Isom already exists, where other people, other Xcepts already exist. And they just came in seamlessly and fluidly. I will show you the very last page because it doesn't spoil anything. Look how freaking beautiful that is. And yes, there are reasons why her suit changes. There's reasons for a lot of things. If you don't want to spoil, what I do want to say is that I couldn't put it down. I read it four times now. And I always read it like all at once because you just it's a page turner. Very well done couldn't ask for anything better and i'm not a comic book person at all but i love these like in the midway like it's in between a regular serial comic book and a graphic novel it's right in between so you get a good 45 minutes to an hour worth in a story rather than 10 minutes on 15 pages or a couple of hours with 350 pages it's a sweet spot right in the middle I'm not, I'm not trying to be a shill for Eric or the Saskas or anything like that. I'm giving you my 100% real thoughts. Except for one typo. I had no issues with this book whatsoever. It was freaking amazing from cover to cover. You could tell they have passion for what they do. They care about their work. The artistry is awesome. The storytelling is awesome. It feels lived in. And I've said this in movie reviews about the Saskas before. They know how to write dialogue. Most people in Hollywood don't. It is a talent. It is a skill that more people should hone. It's very difficult, yes, because I do it myself. They fucking know how to do it. So it flows, it makes everything flow more naturally. So, all in all, I don't have a rating system for comics or, or books like I do for movies. 9 out of 10. Because I don't know what a 10 out of 10 would be. I'd have probably Lord of the Rings in comic book form by J.R.R. Tolkien, which is never going to happen. Rest in peace. But, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is Multi Multi with the GCA. I will see you later. Bye bye. Well.
Well, uh, <laughs> stupid ass. Float ass shit. 